Um, he's from Königsweg, one of our community um, sponsors, and you all know him probably. He's one of the organizers of this um, event, and he was one of the organizers of the EuroPython, long-term supporter of the community. And he's going to talk about effective data analysis with pandas indexes. Please give him a warm applause. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks. Didn't expect so many here. Um, yeah, we know that already. Um, uh, so uh, I like uh, Python community, organizing in Python community, and, and speaking about Python and training people in Python and data analytics. Um, I'm with a small company called Königsweg. We do uh, in innovation strategy, um, um, provide uh, data training. So my part is, of course, all the IT tech tip department, like data science, big data consulting stuff, but we also work with startups and industry. So Ingo, my partner, did just a workshop on how to found your company, so we are a very heterogeneous company um, uh, from many, many backgrounds. Um, and today I um, want to tell you a little bit about um, effective data analysis, pandas indexes. Um, so we're going, I'm going to talk about how uh, we access data with the index, uh, the different index types. Uh, my favorite index, the daytime index, and resampling, and how to work with categorical data. Um, so, just like to a little to know a bit about you. Um, who uses pandas at least twice a week? Okay. So, why are you here? <laughs> okay. Uh, who thought it was really hard to learn pandas in the beginning because you? You, you wanted to do something, and the outcome was something else. OK. Well, yeah, OK. So because I think when I learned pandas, um, uh, when I started, I think it was quite painful, especially like the slicing, and because like you see all like you see many tutorials, and they show you, oh, I, I show you something, and it looks like this, and then you have like very similar code, and it does something different because as a beginner you're probably not aware whether you're working on a data series or a data frame and behavior is very different. So to bring everybody who is not working so much with pandas a little bit up to speed, a little introduction into, not IPython, the wrong slide, okay, yeah, so basically, yeah, so um, let's change to our notebook. Mm. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, wow. um, let's change the notebook and just like give a little introduction into um, uh, series slicing and how to work with the index, and also make a case. Hey, this is an index, and you ha should really have a look at it. And there's multiple types of indexes. So, uh, series. Sorry for you work very regularly with um, uh, uh, pandas. If this is probably a little bit boring. Uh, so, um, a series is. Uh, we can just like create a series. It's just like an array, and the, the, the cool thing about a series is it's typed. So it's not like a, as in Python, a list can have multiple types. Uh, under the hood, um, Pandas works with NumPy. Uh, NumPy uses type data, so all the data in our series here is integer. So And actually, Pandas just figured it out automatically. And we can, of course, do the same with um, floats. So here, like pandas figured out, okay, there's one float, one float infects the, the rest, and we can also do the same um, with, um, like if there's like a string, it says, okay, object, because like, okay, we cannot, pandas cannot figure out like string two is probably integer two, so it uses the object. Um, under the hood, we have uh, the NumPy data types, like NumPy floats, NumPy integers, and the text is stored as object, so this is quite expensive, and I'm going to show you how we can save some space here later. Um, and if you're not aware of this, this is also something which can drive you crazy if you want to have, like, for example, an integer, but if there's a null value in your integer array, because there's no NAN in the NumPy int implementation, I think they're working on it, so you get a float back. And this is quite confusing if you're not aware. So ah, I, you, you, you import it as, as some type, and you want to have an integer type, and why is this always like a float? So just like a little hint. So um, we can access 
it's just like in a very Pythonic way, we are the position. Also, this is like the first uh, of our series. We can do uh, Pythonic slicing. Um, this feels very natural, and that's also and often overseen. And if you're a beginner to pandas, I totally say use the methods. It's much, much simpler to use the methods, although it's a little bit more to type. Um, you can use the iLock method. Um, so iLock is basically locate something by a label, and the i, you can easily remember i is always like for an integer. So locate something by integer says locate something by a certain position, and here we just say, okay, do a slice from uh, three to six, so uh, we get these three values back. So, so far so good. I think that's really pretty simple. Everyone follows says, hey, why does Alex make such a fuss about it? Um, so um, we can use the same with like um, a label, it's not just like a position, so let's set, reset our index. And so, um, so this is our new series, so we have seen, this is not just like some, 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 some graphical sugar, like we have like these positions in the beginning when we type into actually like, a panda series is a labeled NumPy array. Um, this is a very good concept to think about. It's a label array, and I just like change the labels. Um, we no longer work with the position. The position is automatic, uh, uh, created automatically once we create a new index uh, series. Sorry, um, and here I just like reset it and said take the alphabet. And of course, we can just like access it like in the dictionary. Um, we can even slice it, which is pretty nice. And we still can use if we pass an integer use still like the position to access it. Um, so this is pretty forward. Um, so what about not non-unique indexes? So let's rename our series into Gattaca XYZ. So our new labels are here and you see like there's a T's, uh, there's like uh, two times T, two A's, and what happens now? So we still can locate something, we can no longer slice because the result is ambiguous um, or it's not clear which which A is our intention um, to stop by. And we can also, um, but we still can, if there's like a unique park pond, it's still smart to figure it out. Yeah. A good thing, especially because this is like a tiny ridiculous data set here for the demo, and you can also check if you have a data, the bigger data um, uh, series, is the index monotonic? So we see, of course, it's on, yeah, quite obvious, and we already know it's not unique. But you can just like check the parameters, and pandas will give you without overhead and the information because it keeps track anyway. Um, so uh, let's reset our index to some to uh, what we had at the beginning, um, just like positions. We know there are um, unique now; they're monotonic. So you can also ask if there are. Um, monotonically increasing or decreasing, so this is really handy to get some insight into um, your um, uh, uh, data series. So um, let's switch back to presentation. Okay. So what we learned now, or just bring everybody to speed. We have a NumPy array. NumPy is array is are, are just like one data type that makes them fast. Um, a pandas a data series is um, a labeled NumPy array, and basically a data frame. Something I'm going to show you in a bit uh, is just like multiple data series, basically, and the index keeps them together. So they all have the same. They share, all share the same labels, um, and uh, if and of course like. We used to Google, we used to use Stack Overflow, and one thing is Pandas is evolving a lot. Uh, so if you stumble up of something panel 3D, like panel of three dimensional data structure, remember it's already been deprecated. <laughs> so don't uh, actually use it. Uh, fun fact is the pan in Pandas is actually from panels. So I don't know whether the library is going to be renamed as well. Um, so yeah, you heard about it. Um, this is the basic concept, and let's go back to, well, let's show you some data frames and two-dimensional data. So I've prepared some sample um, data set. It's just like um, 10 by 10 rows. Um, we can uh, just, oh, okay, oops. Oh my god. Oh. Sorry for that. Um, 
Oh, sorry. So you didn't even see I messed up. Very good. <laughs> uh, ah, here. Cool. Very good. Uh, so nothing happened. You did not miss anything. So uh, we have this nice data frame, 10 by 10. Um, and I'm really good. You don't see it in the And we can just like access it by a position. Now we have a two-dimensional data structure, and the position gives us the column or a series bag, no longer the row. Uh, so if you look, use to work with tabular data, you have to really think about like 90 degrees um, turned. Um, so it's now in a series. And something else, um, if you, uh, but if you slice, we get two rows back. And there's good reasons for this, but it's something that can drive like beginners mad because you can say, okay, data frame is now columns, so why not slice the columns actually? And a good concept here is also to use the iLog method again, and on data frames, the iLog method actually accepts two input values. By default, you only have one, and actually here it's the axis zero, and the other one is the axis one. Something which drove me totally mad in the beginning. What's this axis about? Because the default values in pandas are really good. So you can do a lot without even caring about th this whole axis thing, but sometimes you really need to use it and you need to understand what the axes actually are. Um, and basically it's a very simple concept to remember. So the default zero axis is zero, and to remember what axis one is, axis one is basically like the series and you just can remember it, it's like a one. So that's my, that's my helper in my brain. Um, but, and if you're new, use the iLog method, use, use, use the explicit method, it's much more simple. So, um, so this is just like an example of how to um, get a segment out of a data frame. Um, and of course, if we want to um, get two columns back, we can just like pass in, um, uh, two dots, and uh, which is basically slicing for everything from beginning to end, and just pass in something for um, the axis one. So far, so good. Um, just a little demo. The same applies if we ha use uh, labels, text labels, like here. So this is just like a little repetition of the same with text labels, so I don't want to spend too much time on it. We can also slice here. And yeah, pretty much forward, that's the same. So, so um, we have a little sales data. The sales data is from the Bluth online store and you know the Bluth family? Okay, oh, so good, usually nobody gets it. So the Blue family is a very, uh, it's a really cool series, Arrested Development, and this is the mother, and she just says um, uh, she never goes shopping. She always has some Mexicans work for her, and she says, hey, Michael, how much is a, can a banana be in a supermarket today? $10? And so, yeah, this is basically the thing. So the Blue online store has now opened, and he sells the 10 most sold products ever only. Yeah? So this is the Toyota Corolla, the iPhone, the PlayStation, um, and stuff like that, and bananas for $10. Um, so we have, I have a prepared data set here. Um, it's very straightforward. We just have a customer's name, uh, a birthday, um, customer, basically the, the company name, an order date, and the product name, and how many units the product, uh, how often it was bought on a unit price. So it's really super easy and simple. It's, um, so it is, uh, yeah. So if we look at the info, we see, okay, the birthday and the order date are already timestamps. So, uh, yeah, all the data tapes are types seem fine. Um, that's the best we can get. Uh, the rest is text data. And one thing, uh, which is a very powerful concept, just like for completeness, you can create, on our series, you can create a Boolean index. And Boolean indexes are just really simple. So just let's create one. So we take the data series units from our um, uh, uh, data frame. Uh, so we get all the units back and just ask greater 80, uh, 40. And then we just get true and false back. And, and then we basically just like map or mask this array to our sales data frame and we get everything in our data frame back with you more than 40 units. So this is pretty forward and a really nice way to work with pandas. Um, 
We can also combine these, so it's like very, very powerful to um, select uh, data within uh, pandas uh, data frames. So here we just like, uh, the first is an and, so we ask anything more than 40 units or if the unit price was less than 10, and below the same as, as or, um, which we can use for the pipe. Uh, one subtle thing, because pandas has many um, parentheses, square brackets, and all the time, um, you need to put those two statements into parentheses, otherwise it won't work um, within the square brackets. So yeah, this is um, pretty straightforward. And then there's the multi-index. Um, the multi-index, you get a multi-index back if you do a grouping. Something, because I'm, I'm just like a try and error guy. I, I, yeah, um, I like to see stuff, I like to try stuff, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with like group by and sorting and, and all the stuff which is very, very um, uh, uh, similar from what I know from SQL, working with SQL. So multi-index was driving me bad, mad in the beginning as well because what I was not aware if I do a grouping, I get a multi-index back actually. Um, so if we do just like, we create some data here. It's just like, just like some simple data. Um, it's just like, uh, could be hotels. We have a hotel category. It's uh, like, think zero to three. Uh, we have a city, um, uh, the, the, the country where the city is in, and the rating and the price for a room. So if we group this data, we get something really nice, nicely printed on the stream. So every, oh, in the beginning, I totally love these. Oh, it's so cool. It's very readable. Um, but how can I access the data now? And usually, I started to unstack them. Um, which is not the best concept. So let's have a look. What is actually the structure behind? So if we ask for what's the index, we get the multi-index back. And if you just go through and read through what's there on the screen, it's very easy to understand the sudden. We have levels. You see the countries there. The levels themselves are um, ordered in the same way we uh, did in our grouping. And um, then we can also have like, uh, we still have the series names in there as well. Um, and we also see the values here. So, and we also can explicitly ask for the levels we have. And once you see what is in multi-index and we already see, or yeah, we see it's always lists, but actually if we look a little bit further, we see it's, oh, it's a frozen list. And Basically, we see there's some hierarchy. Um, it's, it's, it's nested. Um, one thing is if you don't like uh, the, the, the display like this, you can also like turn it off. It's just like a feature in the output. But I like it more the other way, the, um, the sparse way. Um, but we also can directly access the values by level. So we can ask, get the le values on level two. Um, also the levels are zero index, so this is on the third level. Um, here we see, okay, this is actually the categories. Um, and we can also ask what's on the first, that's the like, first uh, grouping key. Um, and we also see, we can also access data directly and take basically a slide, a slide something like a slice out of our index, just ask, okay, this is a, on the top level, we have the country, so if we ask for use the lock method on the multi-index, we get everything back from Germany, just like a nice piece. And we can also just like walk down the path and path, pass in tuples into, um, into onto our multi-index. And this is just like the values from Mannheim. That's quite expensive in Mannheim. Actually not true, probably. No, no. Yeah. Um, another thing is with um, these uh, multi-indexes, we can just like go there, for example, ask for what's the max? What's the max in Mannheim? Uh, uh, so, and the nice thing here we see, it's giving us the max back, not by any combination of a grouping. It's actually the max of the columns um, we see here. So um, th th we give the maximum price, which we have um, two, and okay, rating is seven. Sorry, bad example. Oh, should have chosen Paris. Um, okay, um, and, and we can also go down. Uh, walk, walk the path longer, just pass in another tuple and ask just like for category pri free prices and then we basically just get a series back because on, on the very end, um, it's, we cannot go any farther in, um, on uh, uh, level three, uh, we again have a data series back. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, um, it's always good to check what you're actually working as. So just like ask for the type here. So you see, this is a type. And you, of course, if you want to, uh, you can also go and take the multi-index and then stack it. So here, the ratings, have, we have moved all the ratings again on the column level. And you can go and unstack and unstack uh, again and everything uh, if, you, if this data structure works better for you. Now, my favorite index, my favorite index is actually the daytime index. So I have some uh, very simple data. It's just like a sensor and temperatures. We have a timestamp, which is here still a string, and a Celsius temperature as float. So very state, very complicated data set. If we plot it, it looks like this. If we have a closer look here, we see uh, it's, uh, entries, uh, and we see, OK, float and uh, text. Um, it has just like positional index. So let's change it now in the next step here um, with the pd to datetime function, which is a date, which is a string to date parser in pandas. I'm just passing that on to the index. So take all the values from the column and make them the index as a, but as datetime. So it's very easy to work then. So we see we no longer have a positional index. We now have timestamps. If we have a closer look here, um, we see, oh, yeah, timestamps, surprise. Um, you can also see how many there. We see also there's no frequencies. Pandas also supports frequencies. We're not going to go there today. Um, and we can also check, is it monotonic? No. So OK, mm, cool hint already. Um, is it unique? OK. Seems to be one sensor only. Or yeah, maybe. Um, and but. One thing which is I really like with pandas, it's so well connected. If you plot it and we have a daytime index, pandas all said, hey, daytime index and time series are in orderly fashion. So here, before we had like ups and downs all the time, we see, okay, this looks more like how, how temperatures behave over days and nights. Um, so um, we can um, here with the index, the index now is a daytime and you can basically access it like a daytime object. So if you have a daytime object, we can just ask for the year by, as a parameter, just dot year, dot month. And the same applies for pa in pandas. Um, so we can just like easily group by the year and the week just by making like a group by by a list of like these two values. We can directly drain from the index without any calculations, without creating any extra columns. And just like ask for the mean. And just like to see a little bit more here on the screen, I just plot it to a bar plot. Um, then we can also like do the same for year and the day of the year um, and just like ask for the mean. Um, so this is very accessible. And we can also like do the same for the day of the year. And another nice feature, if you don't know yet, you can use the ACK function. And you can, uh, to ACK, you can also like pass in for multi pass in multiple uh, functions. So this is just like the regular min and max function. And we can just like min plot min and max values just like that as a one liner um, with a combination of ACK and the um, daytime index. Uh, another nice feature is um, it has a lot of anything you want to wish for in uh, daytime uh, stuff or daytime stuff. So you can we can also ask for the weekday here. So uh, in the first line, um, I'm just like creating. Uh, there's adding a new column. It's called weekday, and it's just like from zero to six. If you're not aware, like this is one thing where pandas is European friendly. So first day is actually Monday, not. Sunday, as in the US, very often. So five and six is Saturday and Sunday. Um, in the second step, yeah, I'm just we, we create uh, the, the another uh, series called weekend, and then we just plot them each, each other, and so we now have learned. Oh, actually, the temperature rises early on weekends than on the weekdays um, in our tiny data set over just a month. So. But this is something you don't need any for loops, you don't need any functions, right? Functions for it is all built in. It's just like a clever harnessing of the um, daytime index. And one, another one really cool thing is you can also like just like pass in like um, uh, uh, ranges um, as uh, timestamps. So basically, just like in uh, uh, well formatted um, year, month, uh, um, uh, date, uh, time stamp, we can just like pass in less than strings with a slice, and it actually will give you uh, the, the range between these two dates for these two dates. Um, and yeah, so it's super cool. And you can also like just ask for the hour. So if you're interested only in the values um, between uh, 12 and uh, 4 o'clock in the evening, uh, in the afternoon, um, it's just like that.
And another nice thing is, uh, if you want to do aggregation stuff, you can also like just resample because probably this is a sensor. Sometimes there might be network errors, there might be too many data, and you probably, you don't even need to write aggregations for it. You can just like ask, okay, please resample by D. D is day. So this is basically um, the maximum value if we resample our data set by day. We can do the same for the month. We can even like create our own syntax, or like create stuff like 3D, which is three days, um, if you're interested to resample for that period. Um, and of course, we can also resample by day and, and pass in the same with the uh, ACK function, or uh, with ACK, and get minimum, maximum, and plot it immediately. Um, this is in the slides, it's a little bit too small here. Sorry, yeah, I'll post them later anyway. Okay, this is, um, these are all the resampling um, parameters you can pass in. Um, I put, I've taken the freedom to put the most relevant, in my view, on the left-hand side. As Pandas was uh, invented uh, at the hedge fund, you see there's a lot of all these business stuff, uh, um, which I always rely on Ingo to uh, tell me what, what is that actually, because um, I like 335 um, year days. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll post them later if you're interested. Um, let's last but not least, another nice feature is um, to work uh, with categorical data in pandas. And uh, so what is that about? So one good use case for categorical data is, um, I think, our um, sales data because what we see, and if we use it, look at info, a lot of strings. Um, and if you come from uh, databases and SQL, it's a quite obvious concept. What would, would we do in a relational database? Here we store all these objects, they take some memory, and one subtle thing to notice here is the plus in the memory usage here. Yeah. So because if you ask for that and if you have object, it only, actually, Pandas only measures uh, how much the um, references to these objects take in memory, not the text mem. So basically we could have there like the, a whole library there and pandas would say, no, no, it's really small here. So this, the, the plus is quite subtle. So um, you can have a, we can have a deeper look. So if we ask for uh, the memory usage and or ask for a deep true, if we pass in deep true, it, pandas will actually give us how much is there actually uh, being used. Um, so um, yeah, that's quite a lot. So we see, okay, a lot of overhead where everywhere we have text and objects, it's, yeah, that's quite a lot. And it's basically, we know from our data set, because I told you already, it's 10 products anyway. So we know there's a lot of repetition probably. So let's try. So I'm, um, we just like converting uh, our sales data, um, the three rows, which are like text, um, to a new type. Um, uh, and then we see, to a categorical type, um, and we already see, okay, has been decreasing, so let's measure that. So we see, oh, okay, it's only 46% of name, and for example, product, which only 10 products, we only have now 3% uh, in memory, so we saved a lot of memory. So if we, um, yeah, that's like basically just like the, the math on uh, how much we actually solved, and it's basically now our data set is only like 40% of what was it before. And basically, it's a very simple concept. Just like take an idea, it's a lookup table, um, and we save all the memory and all the overhead for repeating data. So if you have text data in your data frames, you can free your memory, just like we, with working with categorical. Um, okay, what else? Um, okay, we can also like set the index. You can uh, also Okay, now this, yeah, we can also, okay, sorry, um, should have deleted that. Let's go here, simpler example. Um, you can also uh, create a categorical, and another nice thing is here with categoricals, you can also pass in like an order as you like. So if you have something, this is a very simple, it's just like a simple example. We have data like good, nice, excellent, bad, neutral, which is probably from uh, some forms where you ask your customer how they like your new API service, and you even can give them an order. So obviously if we ask, if I ask for the max volume here, we get excellent back because we defined it here with the second list um, and uh, we said, okay, yeah, this is ordered data actually. So, um, 
and we all can also like ask for a minimum when we see. Oh, oops. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, just yeah. yeah. Let's say we max. Let's say we max. So um, it's also really powerful. Um, we don't have the time to go deeper. You can also like do comparisons, ask for like greater uh, nice, for example, and access data like that. So um, if you have data like that, um, uh, I totally um, try to use categorical. It can be it can not only free your memory. It can also like really improve uh, your analytics and uh, accessing the data by these values. Um, yeah, that's the end of my talk. Um, thank you very much for the attention. Um, we are totally out of time. Jens is already giving me like <laughs> kill you thoughts. Uh, that breaks. Um, if you have questions, um, I'll be around. Just like come talk to me. Um, yeah. So um, thank you very much for the attention. Thank you.